Hello and welcome to AV Cyberactive. Have you ever thought when you log into a system or just basically unlock your phone, how does it recognize that it's you? Believe it or not, there are a lot of checks that are being done in the background so that it knows or the system knows that it is only allowing only the authenticated users into the system. This is where MFA or multi-factor authentication comes into play. In this video, we will break down at what is MFA, why it's important, and how you can effectively implement it to advance your online security. So get ready with your notepads. However, before we understand what is multi-factor authentication, you have to first understand the concept of IAAA. And it of course is an abbreviation for identification, authentication, authorization, and accountability or auditing. The identification or the I in this context refers to you being identified as a subject. And so how do you identify yourself? You input your name, your username, your username ID, your employee ID or your social security number or something like that. For example, I am Thor, that's your identification. Now, would you allow anybody to access their, your system just because they say who they say they are? No, right? You would go ahead and further authenticate them so that you can verify their identity. So how do you prove their, if they're an authenticated user? There are many factors that comes into the second A of authentication. There are in fact five factors of authentication which you add in addition to your identification so that you can prove yourself as an authenticated user. So the type one is something you know, type two, something you have, type three, something you are. Type four and type five are not really talked about, but type four is somewhere you are and type five is something you do. Well, second A in IAAA is the authorization. Authorization, which means you have already been identified and authenticated. Now you're let into the system. So now what are you supposed to access in a system or what are the objects that you're supposed to access on a system? It's called the authorization part. And the last A is also refers to accountability or auditing. This refers to tracing an action to a subject's identity or something that has been done already and it can be proved that the person who has done the activity is the person who has done it. Basically, we are trying to prove non-repudiation, which means you prove who or what action was performed and the person perf who has performed the action cannot deny performing that action. Hope that was clear. Now, if you were able to understand this far of the concept of IAAA, you already know what is MFA or multi-factor authentication. Because if you remember, the most important factor in IAAA was the first A itself, which is authentication. And hence, MFA is a security process that requires users to provide two or more different types of authentication factors to verify their identity before they are given full access or authorized to access a system or an application. These factors will typically fall into the main three categories which we discussed earlier. Let's discuss them in detail so able to get a better understanding of the knowledge factors. This is where it gets interesting. Don't miss this part. MFA or multi-factor authentication use a combination of these three elements to authenticate. Number one, something you know. So have you ever encountered that when you try to log in to a particular service or online, it'll just all of a sudden ask you some security questions or ask you to enter an OTP that it was sent to your phone or even your WhatsApp would sometimes ask you for your PIN number. This is a perfect example of your knowledge. That is something you know. To give you a few examples of something you know would be answering security questions, entering your password, OTPs that has been sent out to you to your phone via an SMS or even CAPTCHA those scribbly words sometimes that you're unable to recognize and it gets frustrating I know the main reason the CAPTCHA was developed was it is an automated test that distinguishes between humans and computers online however with the advancement in technologies nowadays the attackers are nowadays easily been able to recognize CAPTCHA and that is no, not considered any more secure anymore. Second authentication factor, something you have or something that you have. 
So have you ever been asked by your organization to install an application onto your phone that generates some random numbers or been sent an email and to ask for an OTP or even given a badge which has a little device which generates random numbers? Well, congratulations, you already are familiar with the authentication factor that is something you have. This is an authentication factor that provides you a randomly generated number or an alphanumeric number that proves that you have something in your possession and when challenged, you should be able to provide that code or that authentication key that would verify that it's you who is authenticating into the system. Examples of such would be an OTP generated by a, your smartphone application or an OTP which has been sent via a text or an email, access badge, USB token devices, smart cards or key fobs with security keys that it generates on demand. Also sometimes software tokens and certificates or digital certificates that is being provided by the user whenever challenged for something you have or something that you can have in your possession. The last and the third one which is my own personal favorite that is something you are. This authentication factor is quite an interesting one. You must have seen in sci-fi movies how they authentic and use themselves by using their entire palm or they pop their eyeballs in a scanner and then it scans their entire eye. It is something similar of that sort but in real life it's quite boring. Your cell phones also do it by scanning your fingerprint. It takes the snapshot of the geometry of the ridges that you have in your fingerprint and authenticates it against that as well already what is registered on its phone. And that is how it knows that it, it's you who is trying to authenticate onto the system or onto the cell phone. Similarly, third authentication factors would include scanning your fingerprints, facial recognition, so your facial ge geometry, even voice signatures can be used as authentication factors, your iris or your retina scanning can be also used as a biometric scan. And sometimes in a very advanced cases, behavioral analysis can also be done as a factor to authenticate and prove that this is something that you are. Now, even though that you have implemented these authentication factors or a combination of these in your organization, and you can just sit back and relax and thinking that nobody can you know, hack into your system, you're absolutely wrong on that one. Crackers or hackers every day are breaching networks even if they are secured with multi-factor authentication because they would try to find their ways around the system and try to bypass these authentication factors. So how do you keep yourself secure against these type of attacks? In other words, what are the best practices and consideration? I'll give you five of them to get you started. Always prioritize application-based authenticators or SMSs because SMS can be very vulnerable to, to SIM card swaps because inherently SMS was never developed or this authentication mechanism was never developed to be secure to be used as an authentication factor to begin with. It was developed just as a simple mode of communication and with no security in mind. So remember to prioritize always application-based authenticators. Example, Symantec VIP or Microsoft Authenticator. Still here with me? Stay up till the last one because the last one is the most important one which nobody cares to do. Second consideration, regularly review and update your multi-factor authentication or MFA settings for any change in the environment or improvements. Folks, remember that disaster can hit your organization or even in your personal computer setup at any point of time. So make sure you always regularly review and update your MFA settings according to your changing environment. And the last one, which is of my, one of my favorite ones, is to store backup codes in a secure location in case you lose access to your second factor authentication. Because in MFA, every organization to recover in case of you lose the settings of your MFA or your software goes through an entire organization rehaul, it would require a backup code that unlocks the all the features. In this case, it becomes very important and at of utmost importance to store your backup codes in a secure location, possibly in a geographically diversified location. So remember this security professional, this one thing is very important. 
Remember that your goal is to make your accounts the most secure as possible and absolutely do not cut corners at all. I know this was a long one, so what did we learn today? We learned the concept of IAAA, authentication, the A, how it works, the multi-factor authentication and the factors or the three factors in the multi-factor authentication. Now hold up, before you think the video is over, a little piece of an advice. Multi-factor authentication is your secret weapon to any battle for any online security. So by implementing MFA, you're not only adding an extra layer of protection, but you can, you're also adding a weapon in your arsenal that can make all the difference. And I'm sure now you understand the importance of multi-factor authentication and how it adds an extra layer of defense to your organization's overall security posture. Thank you for joining me today. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your family and your friends. Stay secure out there and until next time, happy computing. Bye now.